This experiment looks at the required practical for GCSE that involves energy changes. And I set up a very simple experiment. There's 25 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid in a beaker. And I'm going to add, add, so I'm going to record its temperature first, then I'm going to add an alkali to it, or a base. Temperature about 21 degrees. I'm adding a weighed amount, one gram of calcium hydroxide. Tip it in. Give it a good stir. And the temperature has already risen to about 28 degrees C. So it's an exothermic reaction. Now we're not going to get very accurate results from this experiment because I'm using a beaker and a glass beaker is not a very good insulator. So for a start we want to improve our experiment by using something that isn't going to lose heat to the surroundings. Incidentally, in a re recent exam question they did an endothermic reaction. That's one that goes, gets colder, it takes in heat from the surroundings. So when people were asked to improve the apparatus and explain why, they had to say you would use an insulator rather than a glass beaker, and this would reduce heat coming from the surroundings. But in this case, an exothermic reaction, we are losing heat to the surroundings, and so we won't get very accurate results. This time I'm using a polystyrene cup I've also put a lid on it. There's a glass beaker there just to stop it from toppling over because it can be a bit top heavy. But I'm going to add my calcium hydroxide, stir it. The lid is not ideal, but it does part of the job. And measure the temperature rise. And this time it's actually 32 degrees, which is already more than it was previously. Now, in a typical exam, question, they often then continue to add the calcium hydroxide or whatever the reactant is so that you get different temperature rises depending on how much of the solid you add. So I've added another batch of calcium hydroxide, give it a good stir, and the temperature rise this time is 40 degrees. And we could carry on doing that, adding extra portions of the solid calcium hydroxide each time and measuring the temperature rise. Having carried out this series of experiments, we have now got plotted a graph of the mass of calcium hydroxide added, that is your independent variable, and it always goes along the x-axis, the independent variable, and up the y-axis, the dependent variable, temperature in degrees C. And you'll see from the graph that as we add more and more calcium hydroxide, the temperature rises more, up to a certain point, and then it stops rising. The question will often then ask you to draw two lines of best fit. And what I'm doing is drawing a line of best fit for the increase in temperature, and then for the gradual decrease in temperature. And the question then arises, well, why does the temperature increase as you add one, two, three, four grams of calcium hydroxide, but then slightly decrease after you add five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten? And it's because once you've added a certain amount of calcium hydroxide, that was the white solid in this case, it has reacted with all the hydrochloric acid. And we can work out from our graph exactly how much calcium hydroxide reacted because where the two straight lines meet it's about 4.2 grams is where the maximum amount of reaction took place this gave off the most heat energy so the temperature rise was highest above that point all we're doing is adding extra calcium hydroxide that has nothing to react with and because it's got nothing to react with, it's not going to raise the temperature of the reaction mixture. In fact, the temperature of the reaction mixture is gradually decreasing because over a period of however many minutes you do this experiment, it might be cooling down a bit. Another point is that because we're adding a solid that's not reacting, that solid is also at room temperature, so it's cooling down the mixture very, very slightly. And I'll show you an exam question rather like that in a second. 
Here's a graph taken from an exam paper where in fact the reaction involved adding sulfuric acid, a solution dissolved in water, to another chemical, sodium hydroxide, also a solution dissolved in water. And the larger the volume of acid you added up to a point, the temperature increased quite dramatically. But once you added more of the sulfuric acid, because the sodium hydroxide had all been used up, it was the limiting reactant, because it had all been used up, the extra sulfuric acid had nothing to react with. But also, because you're adding a liquid, sulfuric acid, a dilute solution, that cool solution is going to be cooling down the reaction mixture quite significantly. So, once you've reached your highest temperature of 30.6 degrees, in this case, adding any other liquid is going to cool it down. There's no further reaction because the sulfuric acid is in excess and because it's a liquid at room temperature, it's actually cooling the overall mixture down. And that was actually a four mark question at the bottom of this. Explain why the graph in, line, in, graph in figure seven goes up and then down. Two marks for why it goes up, because the sulfuric acid is reacting with the sodium hydroxide and it's an exothermic reaction. So the more sulfuric acid you add, the more energy is released. And then, once all the sodium hydroxide has been used up, any extra sulfuric acid simply cools the mixture down. Four marks. A good four marks for you to score.